Right, so I said I'd do a, a vid on some things I've been discovering with long-term usage. Uh, so, a few months ago, a guy messaged me, uh, specifically saying that he was running 500 mega tests a week, and his blood values were just above upper range natural, which was, well, obviously, the first thing I said was, is the gear bunk. So it would have been massively underdosed if it was. He was pretty confident it wasn't, but I said the only other thing could be upregulation of clearance. And it was basically when our blood plasma levels, our blood hormone levels stay stable for too long, the body will increase the speed at which it clears the hormone. So this is where you get the phrase terminal half-life, where a test length half-life drops down to 4.5 days. So it's over half. And it sort of fit with what he was taking and the figures he was seeing. But at the end of the day, he could have just been bungier. Anyway, he came back to me more recently and said he'd changed. I suggested that he change his injection protocol to just one shot a week, um, trying to create some irregularity in his hormone levels, therefore hopefully stopping the up rate of the clearance. Came back to me and said he'd just tested again. He was on 300 mega test length a week, one shot on a Monday. And his bloods were sitting at 27 n mole, uh, upper range is 31. So obviously, he's still clearing his shit out pretty quick. Could he be bunk gear again? Well, he changed labs. It's not the first time I've seen this, and I've seen it with a client as well. Uh, and what I also am seeing a lot of is guys that have used quite long term, two, three years without a break. They're going down off a cycle onto a cruise and they're getting symptoms of low test. They've got no libido, dick ain't working, usual shit. Literally as if they've got no test. Now, and these guys were running correct TRT doses. So they were coming down to 125, 150 mega a week. Uh, and the body was reacting like it was on low test. Again, would, would signify then that either the gear was bunk or... or they were clearing the test out faster than normal. And it's when I start digging and I start to remember, you know what, I remember this guy having this problem, this guy having this problem. It was like, well, either there's a shitload of fucking crap gear out there, which we know it's not all brilliant, but severely crap gear, and particularly when you only test is generally there or thereabouts because it's fairly cheap to make, or there's something else going on. Now, one thing that this guy noted on the 300 was that he actually felt good uh, and he felt he was on some form of cycle, but his bloods didn't match it. So the only explanation I can offer is that we know a couple of things happen when you increase free testosterone. First thing we know is SHBG lowers. So that means there's more free floating test. We know free floating test has a more direct correlation to how you feel regarding your test levels. As in, if libido feels low, um, etc., etc., generally it's because it's more notable when your free test levels are low. So sometimes you'll see that your overall test levels are, are, are within range, but your free test levels are low and you'll still be symptomatic of very low test. So that Free test levels have a much more dramatic effect on how we feel. So obviously, post long term use is SHBG is going to be low, which means free test is going to be elevated. So that could be one reason. The other potential reason is that we know that when we're in got gear excessively in our system for a long time, the body produces more androgen receptors. So could it be that we are utilizing the steroid more effectively within the areas that count? Potentially, yes. So this could be why he was feeling okay and feeling quite bowen and, and seeing strength gains and everything else. Now, on the surface of it, it's no big deal. You know, he's, he's within range and he's getting a positive response. But what I don't know, what I genuinely don't know, is what the effect is on conversion to estrogen does that still convert in relation to the higher dose or does that convert in line with what the bloods are showing and the other thing I don't know is side effects wise if he's getting the effects of 100 150 mega week 
in his blood values are the side effects the same as 150 mg a week or is the side effects going to be equivalent to 300 mg a week not much on six eight weeks definitely an issue when we're talking eight ten twelve months at trt <clears throat> so it would appear that if you are a long-term user that potentially your clearance or your efficiency of clearing the hormones going to increase and therefore you are going to need to start taking more to keep stable to keep blood levels at a level that you want them to be this is not and i repeat this is not an excuse to run 500 mig a week and say you are on a fucking cruise all right this is not a wholesale class band green card to run high dose cruisers this is get your levels checked and adjust accordingly fuck me it's 29 quid for a testosterone test from many checks i think are they going to break the fucking bank and then you'll have a better picture of what you're doing ideally it strengthens the argument to have some time off now this particular gentleman had been on five years there's little chance he's going to recover with a PCT, so he doesn't really have an option to come off, which means he's going to be stuck running elevated doses for the rest of his days. And let's just hope that those elevated doses don't increase and elevate the health risk. But I think they will to some degree. Because at some point, those levels are still going to be elevated, even if it's not for very long. So, it would appear that... Well, to be honest, I'm pretty confident in this that long-term usage uh, and long-term usage with what we've always practiced, which is stable blood values, is going to result in your body clearing the drug out faster. And that is not going to just disappear. I, I hope that some irregularity in injection frequency would solve the problem. It would appear that is not enough. For that. Definitely in this individual's case, obviously, I haven't followed this route with other people because I wasn't aware of how directly it was affecting the situation, but now I am. I'll endeavor to get more information from others and I'll endeavor to get some of the, what they're using tested so we can rule out the bunk gear problem. Um, but it would seem now, and I'm pretty confident that this is the case, that long-term use is going to result in an efficient or overly efficient clearance of the hormone. So people say, now oh, that's it, then is it? Your body adapts, it gets used to it. No. Your androgen receptor sensitivity is still the same, and your body's reaction to a degree is still the same, but your body just shifts it through your system faster. That's where the difference is. Because uh, a lot of people saying, well, it's androgen in, in, in sensitivity or it's androgen resistance. It's not, because if you were androgen resistant in any way, then your blood values would still be elevated you just wouldn't be getting an impact from that you wouldn't be seeing results from that because it would be the receptor that's compromised so the androgens weren't able to deliver their signal and your body wasn't processing that signal properly or correctly that's androgen deficiency within regards to the receptors or androgen resistance so it ain't that this is an upregulated clearance of the hormone and it would appear that the only real treatment that I know of at the moment is time off. However, I have asked this individual, this individual is going on to fast actors now, so we're going to see if injecting fast actors in a lump and the, the hormone instability that causes it, it is going to have any difference in, in his blood plasma levels and how his body deals with the hormone. Now, we, generally speaking, can only really measure test levels, but I would assume that this is the same for all hormones. Sometimes DECA will show up as testing tests, sometimes it won't. Obviously, 10 generally shows up in estrogen, so we've probably got an idea of being able to measure trend levels by looking at estrogen levels. Um, but beyond that, it's all sort of lumped together. Uh, but there's, I don't think there's any doubt that uh, the longer you are on the quicker your body's going to get rid of it and this is me going to end up requiring unless you take a break that you need to run higher doses now what i also don't know is if this 
acceleration of clearance can progress further, i.e. you upregulate, so you increase the dose, would then prolong uses at that dose, eventually mean that you're going to upregulate even quicker and then require an even greater dose. I'm not sure about that, but on the surface at the moment it would appear not. Um, now I can relate back to other information I've seen with other clients over the last couple of years, uh, and it would appear that once it's upregulated, it just stays at that level. It doesn't get any greater, but there's no guarantees. This is all sort of pretty new stuff, um, and with stuff we're only just discovering, so really don't know where we are with it at the moment. But it just reinforces to me that time off is definitely the better way to go. If you stay on long term, you are going to end up needing more gear to sustain the same blood levels. What I don't know yet is if some of that is offset with increased androgen receptors or lowered SHBG, uh, and if that will offset the uh, higher requirements with a more sensitive system. And it's going to be difficult to find out. It's only going to be able to do this through anecdotal evidence. Unfortunately, I don't have access to a lab or the complex testing that would be required to find this out. But without doubt, increased clearance is definitely becoming an issue. And I'm seeing more and more of it. So, just bear that in mind, guys. Uh, like I said, this is not a green flag to plug me. I can cruise on 500 mega a week. Test. See what your blood values are like and adjust accordingly. But if in any way you can, take time off. But if you've been on five, six years, four years, chances are a PCT is going to be ineffective and you're just going to stick yourself through a fucking roller coaster for the sake of it. And unfortunately, you've done the damage. You've created the scenario. You're just going to have to ride it out. All right. Take care, guys. Speak to you.